My left ear loves this song right now. This is the same volume that Mother 3 is usually streamed at, and it's so much louder. Weird, right? You know, I've never seen this before. This new cutscene that they added for the Game Boy Advance version of this game. Crazy. But this is going to be kind of an oddball stream. Dear Princess Peach. Oh, sorry, that's Toad. Deep. <clears throat> never mind. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the stream, everybody. One and all. I, uh, I decided that I wanted to play some Mario. And someone by the name of Dark Bowser 64 decided to help me out. And here we have the Game Boy Advance version of Super Mario 3. We're going to be playing the e-reader levels, which I've never played. Um, guess what? Voice acting removed. So there's people that are nostalgic for the voice acting, and they're going to be upset. But then there's the people that hated the voice acting, like me. And I'm going to be happy. So, so happy. Choose a game! See, I'll do it for you. Why would you remove it? Um, because when I grew up, uh, the, the version of Mario 3 that I play is the NES version, or the Super Mario All-Stars version, and those don't have the voice clips, of course. And so, um, you know. Just what I needed! Oh, they get, they get really annoying, for sure. Um, but we're not going to be doing the actual game. We're going to be doing level card. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. I've never played any of these levels because, put simply, you couldn't. Like, I didn't have the game in the first place, but you need the cards. So someone scanned all the cards and saved it for me. So you have all these levels that have never been played by me. And I'm really excited to finally play these fucking levels. Uh, Mario 3 is one of my favorite games ever. I want to see if these levels live up to what, you know, the rest of the game has to offer. I guess this is a... I don't know what that is. Apparently, they, they dumped these onto the Wii U version. Like, they, they actually had the levels available. So, I guess we'll find out. Uh, I may have to... So, this is familiar. How's the volume, by the way? Is this alright? Because this game is really loud. It's okay. Eat your alms. Oh, this is different. Most of the levels were never released in the U.S. Mm. That da, after da, 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 just sounds wrong. Like even wrong compared to the All Stars version. So this music is taken straight from Mario All Stars. Hmm. Still playing. By the way, we got a tea review tonight. I'm drinking English breakfast tea. And my tea review of English breakfast tea is as follows. It's tea. Oh, by the way, apparently you could, um, you could get these. I didn't know that they put the fucking cape from Super Mario World in this game. But they did, and there's a special way to unlock them? I don't know. Wait, isn't there supposed to be a check? Or no? 
Is that go oh wait, you gotta check if you play as both Mario and Luigi. L is real. Let's find out. Let's just do a quick, um, quick test. I got, I got wings, Mario! Oh! So again, I don't know what wizardry was used to make this work. I'm not talking about the feather, that too, that's cool, it's on its own, but I mean, to get all these levels and to, you know, have them unlocked like this on the Game Boy Advance version. I'm playing this um, on my overclocked GBA, let's say. I got a cape, Mario! I thought you said you had wings, Luigi. Nope, no check mark on the left. I thought that's what that was. It's fine. See, now, I didn't, again, I didn't have this game because um, I had played it a bunch already. You know, I had the Super Mario All-Stars version. I played it to death. I played, um... I played the original, and so I didn't- I didn't feel like I wanted to buy the Game Boy version. Potato Caves. Okay, so here's a little bit of a controversial opinion regarding Mario 3. I'm totally okay with the All-Stars version. I think either way you play the game, it's going to be good. Why is that controversial? I don't know. Maybe I just made that up. Here's a controversial opinion. Controversial opinion. Um, I think there are some people that have a lot of nostalgia for the original, to the point where it's like, purists would argue that... I, I, I've heard the argument made on a couple of occasions. ...that the All-Stars version changes too much, or it's too, um... ...bright and colorful, and the music is different enough, or whatever. Oh, I see what they did here. No, I'm serious. Oh, I'm, I'm serious. I've, you can, listen, if you dig long enough on the internet, you will see something stupid, like there is too much color. People get attached to the way a thing looks, and that, you know, that's the way they want it. Um, I think there's a coin... I think I know where the coin is. Let me, let me just try something out real quick. 108 lives. Yeah. Vinny, how could you be so controversial yet so brave? Here's a controversial opinion. Pizza... ...is so good because it reminds us of tearing into raw flesh. Just like the days when we were... Hunter-gatherers. I didn't say it was going to be a good opinion. I said it was going to be controversial. I don't even necessarily stand by that opinion. Isn't that just meat? I mean, who are we arguing with here? I'm not defending this viewpoint. I don't like it. I'm just throwing it at you. You gotta find someone that believes that and supports that. And then you can you can ask the questions. I'm I'm just here to I'm just here to throw the opinion at you. Oh, here's a controversial opinion. It's <laughs> it's not controversial, but it's an opinion. The chicken tiki masala from Trader Joe's is fucking legit. I just had it today for the first time. I don't know if it's legit. Okay, let's get rid of legit. I'm gonna say... it was good.
was it really? Maybe. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. You're gonna have to find someone with that opinion to argue with you. Was it Freezer Tiki Masala? Yes, it was. Which is why I was surprised it was good. The rice came out fluffy. Chicken was pretty tender. The sauce was decent. Surprisingly good. This music sounds all kinds of fucked up and weird. It sounds... it sounds weird. Vinny, it's amazing how this game sounds so bad while Mother 3 sounds amazing. Mother 3 has probably the best GBA soundtrack I've ever heard at this point. So we're, we're going through the classic levels to start. So I'm sure many of you have seen these levels. I've seen them, just not in the Mario 3 engine. And, um... I guess that's kind of a cool bonus. For those that don't know, the e-reader was an accessory for the Game Boy Advance where you could scan cards. They had little strips of data on them. And I think Animal Crossing... No, wait. Was it Animal Crossing? No. What what used the e-reader? Animal Crossing wasn't on GBA. It was, um... The Mario. It was, um... Pokemon. WarioWare, apparently. Animal Crossing? but you connected it to the GameCube. Ferg. So wait a minute, in order to take advantage of the, the cards for the GameCube version, you had to plug the e-reader into your Game Boy Advance, link cable that to your GameCube, and then you could transfer- that's- okay. Should have used the frog. The game was giving me a message. Slightly sad that these levels aren't linked by a um, world map, but at the same time, it makes sense that they wouldn't be because they're scanned levels. Um, and having 113 lives <laughs> kind of kills some of the challenge, doesn't it? But that's okay. I was just going to restart anyway, so... One way or another, we're seeing all these levels. I'm just kind of curious to see what Nintendo came up with for the unique levels. You know, 15 years or so after the game's original release. The GBA version of Mario Brothers Deluxe had a world map. That is true. Vinny, so you're playing a Super Mario Bros. 1 level and Super Mario Bros. 3 on a Super Mario Bros. 2 remake engine with a Super Mario World cape. I am. Oh, there's five coins on these. Okay, the Mario 3 stuff sounds pretty decent. So this is all new. I'm surprised I didn't go for the e-reader shit. I think yeah, money was a lot tighter back in those days. Kinda had to pick and choose my poison, you know what I mean? Like, ooh! Flopped? 
you couldn't get all the Mario 3 cards, they discontinued it halfway. So wait a minute, it didn't sell well. And then they just ended up locking the levels anyway because no, the cards weren't made. Genius. Japan got all the levels, oh, okay. What is this raid? Is that the streamer's name? Is this the cum boys? What's going on here? I mean, thanks for the raid, but now everyone's coming. Fuck! Yeah! Oh, it's a Joel meme? Listen, I, I don't even watch my own streams. I'm sorry. Uh, I just thought it was a streamer called The Cum Men. And that his audience, the Cum Boys, were here. You know what I mean? It's hard to know these days. You get a lot of weird shit from raids. There's all kinds of new memes that are uncovered every day. Oh, once you get the kern... Oh, wait. No, that wasn't the correct kern. This, this kern's over here. So, you, you have to get all the kern. There's four of them, not five, like in the new Super Mario Brothers series. Was this the first time kern were introduced? No, right? They were, they were introduced in, um... The Super Mario Brothers 2... ...version. Super Mario Brothers 2 GBA. Mario 2 Advance and World had Kerns. Right, okay, yes. Neither of which I owned. I'm talking about the big Kerns. I'm not talking about Dragon Coins. <laughs> I'm not talking about Dragon Coins from Mario World, which were just for a one-up. But coins, rather, that you collect, and they add, they add up to, like, a, a thing that you can unlock or whatever. So this is the first new level. It's honestly kind of, uh... Kind of difficult for the first one. Jesus. I said that was pretty good. I enjoyed that level, but it, it is on the more challenging side. If you'll excuse me a moment, I have to uh, change a control setting, because I'm using weird buttons currently. Let me just change these on my Game Boy Advanced system that I'm currently using. now. Which means when I play Mother 3, I'm going to have to redo that stuff. Yeah, this is much better. I had to adjust the controls so that... God, how do you explain this? For a platformer, I like to have my thumb... the, the tip of my thumb on one button. And... Oh, whoa! And then, the bottom of my thumb can be used to, to jump. Because you gotta hold the run button the entire time you play these games. Oh, these are... These are from Mario World.
They're really putting a lot of Mario World in here. I like that. Yeah. Uh-oh. Ah. I thought there was an exit. Um, to further the tea review, I'd like to say that English breakfast tea is probably the most generic tea. Yes, it tastes like tea. There's nothing special about it like the lemon tea that I had. Fuck. But it's good. I can feel the caffeine surging through my veins. So that's a benefit. That's a bonus. It's weird because I can drink a little bit of tea for the streams and get like a little bit more woken up. I can get more woke. But... you but fuck you but it's not enough caffeine to keep me up too late also i heard about some wendy williams meme with tea where tea is truth because she sips the tea and saying that i was woke because of tea makes me think of that and i i don't know I, I, I don't know, there's like a million new memes every day. I don't even know who these people are. Hey, listen, you know, listen, you told me about it. I gotta... At some point, I'm gonna remember these things and regurgitate them, but it's gonna be incorrect. Fuck! Alright, so listen, chat is just, um, I, I'm partially responsible for this, so I just want to say, chat, whatever's happening right now, we need some, we need some rescuing. We need some lescuing, in fact. So... Morning <sighs> Rescue! So the chat has been saved now. Everyone's good. We're all on Morning Rescue, and now soon enough people will forget about that. And, and you know what? We're going to start an actual conversation, and here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a couple quick things. Did you know that... Fuck this game right now. Vinny, did you just discover that ancient meme? No. No, it's just... It's been brought up. Everything old is new again eventually. Um, but we're going to talk about how EA cancelled the open-world Star Wars game. And so, what, EA has had the Star Wars franchise for five years, and they released two, two games? I'm really, 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 really doing terrible here. Listen, just give me a minute to get used to the... ...to the game and the platforming. I'll be fine. It's been a while. Why? WHY?! So yeah, EA is has cancelled. They shit canned a Star Wars game that was going to be really uh, interesting. I think Respawn's Star Wars game is still slated. Um, I have a feeling that's going to get shit canned too. And the other thing about it is, um, Bungie and Activision have disconnected. So you know, a lot of interesting things happening. Um, I wonder if Bungie is... I wonder what they're gonna do now. Like, are, are they gonna get back to what they do best? I know they're keeping Destiny, which I'm not a Destiny player, so I don't have a lot to say about that. Do we still have faith in Bungie? I don't know, I haven't played their games in years. So... Just tell me if you have a little faith.
some people seem to have faith in Bungie. I say we see what happens. Maybe Activision's the thing that, that was um, causing... E+. Plus. Oh! Why did that need to be there? As if the level wasn't hard enough. The E plus was a was a distraction. I agree. So anyway, that's the the gaming news as far as I'm aware. Um, there might be some more stuff. However, I have my favorite piece of gaming news for um, us us gamers. Um, there's a game that recently got uh, they, they teased a potential release date, which is sooner than you may expect. Wargroove, which is the spiritual successor to Advance Wars. It's an indie game. It's a strategy game like Advance Wars, but medieval. It looks awesome. I can't wait for it. And they said that there's going to be an announcement soon. So this is really good. This is a really, really good piece of news for me. Again, I would prefer Advance Wars. I like the setting of Advance Wars a little bit better. But it's still pretty cool. It looks really good. Mighty number nine hype. Yeah. It sucks that um it sucks that you can't even look forward to games because there's so many games that got hyped and fucking absolutely just terrible. This is pretty... This is pretty cool. So this orb... Whoa. Whoa! Whoa! There's so much of everything in here! You got an orb. You got Mario 3 music. You got Mario 3 levels. Mario 3 engine. You got... Vegetables. Vegetals from Mario 2. What? Everything... Everything is here. Charging Chuck sounds like thunder. Thunder! Um, but no, I really feel like Wargroove is gonna be good. It's been, I think it's been in development for a couple years now, and everything I've seen of the game looks good. Could it be shit? Yeah, sure, sure it could. But I like the way it looks. I think it's gonna be at least something to keep us busy until Nintendo gets their shitty pickles together and releases another Advance Wars game. Oh, wait a minute. So, fingers crossed. It's something I've been excited about. Um... I got contacted from some... from some developer recently. They wanted me to stream... They wanted me to stream this game. It's like an exploration game from some of the people that worked on The Last Guardian. And it got... It got fucking, like, destroyed in the reviews. Hang on a minute. I need to, um... I need to tell you. I mean, I was somewhat interested. But then I looked into it, and now I'm not too interested. But my favorite part was that there was an, um... There was a review that had a good headline. It's clickbait. It's trash, but I wanted to read it to you. Um... Hang on a second. But yeah, it's supposed to be an exploration game where you go around and you uh, explore and you enjoy. That's what it was. So it's called Vane, V-A-N-E, and um, X Last Guardian Devs. So there's a review from Tech Raptor. The headline is just pain, and they gave it like a 2.5. So. Does that mean much? Um, no, not really. I mean, 
But if I'm gonna accept a game code and stream it, I gotta have some interest in it. Or at least it's gotta be good. And everyone- ugh, every review seems to say that it's trash. I don't- I don't- I don't know. I don't know how much of my time I want to waste on it. I wasn't even that interested to begin with, really. But, um... It's a shame. And this brings me back to, actually, there's a reason I'm mentioning this, which is there's a game called Tiny Metal, which was kind of like a 3D Advance Wars indie game on the Switch, and I think some other stuff. And that was something I was interested in, because again, Advance Wars. And they sent me a code for it, and I said to myself, you know what? Sure, why not? It looks cool. I played it. It was just a cash grab. I hate to be cynical about it, but it was so crusty. It was so unpolished. It was like Sunday stream quality assets on some on some of the things. The animations were really bad. I tried. I gave it like 25 minutes and I said to myself, I can't stream this. So that being said, I am fully aware that this, you know, this Wargroove game could be a trap, could be a jape. It's a trap! It could be bad, but um, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt for now and hope that it's good. That's right, Char. They, yeah, that, that's, um, I found out after, by the way, yeah, there's a, a follow-up to that Tiny Metal story, which is that the devs stole money. So that's fun. Uh, definitely, definitely don't want to stream that game. It's a bit of a story. I don't know all the details. I'm not going to try to go into it. So... I get why people would be skeptical when I say, oh, this Wargroove game is coming out, and people are like, yeah, Mighty Number no. 9, hype! I get the cynicism. But why can't we go back to the, the days of purity? <laughs> now listen. Gamers, we just need you to have a little bit of faith. I got one more game! My now son! I got one more game. Vinny, are you going to play um, Partners in Time? I think I will eventually. Well, we did the first page. Doors are plenty. Um, there's another thing with the Star Wars fan film that someone put a hundred thousand dollars into and they didn't make any money off of it and it got claimed by some copyright troll on YouTube and now they're making all the money from it. Is that the story? Did I get that right? I'm trying to summarize it. They tried so hard to get the ghost theme. Wasn't it Disney themselves? Disney? No shit, it was Disney? I didn't watch the video, I didn't follow the story entirely. I know how much they need the money. Now, now listen. We got what you need. Ghost houses are hit or miss for me, and I feel like this one's kind of missing a little bit. <sighs> Is this a meme too? 
What the fuck did I just meme, chat? No, I don't know. What is it? Hit or miss is a meme? Are you... Every sentence has the potential. And if it's not already, in a couple years it will be. I'm telling you, here's what's gonna happen. Someday, someone's gonna go back and watch a stream of mine. And I'm gonna say the word Lucas because I'm playing Mother 3. And soon enough, Lucas is going to be a very, very bad word. That's what's going to happen. I did it. Heck. Oh, that's death. Kuso. You know why Lucas is going to be a bad word? Because George Lucas is going to content claim any and all instances of the words Lucas. Because people were making fun of Star Wars too much. And YouTube is going to have an automated system for words soon enough. George Lucas reacts. Um, what is this terrible level? There, I said it. I hate it. Two keys? Someone said, if only there was some, there was a better YouTube alternative. It's called Pornhub. But the problem with Pornhub is that if you upload your videos to Pornhub, your recommended video section is going to be really weird. And if you're at work and you want to watch a funny video or a video essay, Involving Shebas. You're gonna get a porn virus. Comments are better though. I've heard about that. I don't know firsthand, but I've heard that the comments were better on Pornhub. I. Had the time of my life. <clears throat> so I, I know how I have to do this, but boy, do I not want to have to do it. I'm not even going to try to get all the coins on this level. Three coins, that's fine. Right. E plus. Wait, I don't... What is this shit? I don't want that. I don't need that. I want the exit.
trying to, like, build brand familiarity with children. Yes, I will purchase the new e-reader cards. E-reader confirmed smash. that. Yep. The Mario World Ghost Houses taught me nothing, apparently. Now, son! Vinny, why don't you have a Beans emote? I don't know. Why don't I have a Beans emote? This isn't the way? What, which? What, what's the right way? I don't even know what the right way is anymore. I thought I had to go through there to get to the right way. Do I have to go this way first? I think I gotta go this way first. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, save me. Please, save me from myself, Jesus. 20 seconds. Like 20, 20 suckins. Well, doors are plenty. Only 111 lives left. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Earl Grey was a much better performance enhancer. I think you're right about that. Everyone else has the Earl Grey advantage, why can't I have it? Now I can't even tell if the music is going to end, so I just have to take a guess. Okay. I'm going to need... a moment. Alright, we're good. We're good. I don't want to- I don't even want to know about these coins right now. I don't care about them. I just want this level to end. One coin. That's it. Just the one. Alright then. Oh, really? I can't toss these up. Like in Mario World? Can't. So someone said I could open... I can open these motherfuckers with coins, but I can't.
Hey, Mario! Luigi is so floaty. While his small brother Mario, his extremely small brother, lingers close behind. Bombarded by bob bombs, this sounds terrible. They open automatically? Okay. The fuck is this block? What is that? Okay, so it's one of these levels. counter, so I guess I have to collect all the coins to unlock a thing. That's an interesting mechanic that I've never seen used again. Alright then. Luigi, Luigi is too floaty. Normally I don't mind the floatiness, but this one's like extra float. It's a root beer float. Dear God. These bombs are just scummy enough to reach me. George, why do you think they've used our bass guitar in their game? Jerry, it's copyright fraud, Jerry! <sighs> wow, this is kind of a nightmare. It's like, it's like they hired someone who made, like, C-plus Mario Maker levels to go back and make the last two levels. Even though I don't mind this level too much. It's just the auto-scrolling nature and the lack of checkpoint. Also, Mario 3 didn't have checkpoints because the levels were so damn short. So there was no need for checkpoint. Luke isn't floaty in the main game, just so you know. So they, for these levels specifically, they made Luigi nice and floaty. Doesn't your overclocked GBA have safe states? <laughs> I try not to use them if I can help it. Fuck. Like, I like to go as long as I can without using safe states. Am I overclocked, GBA? Oh no, Mario! What are you doing, Mario? Oh. I don't think I want to go that way. 
but I'm gonna go that way. Oh. Oh. Well, this is not something I've seen before. Not like this, at least. It's in that base. I hear the dude from Wolfpack did this one. Boom, boom. Luigi, you are a problem. <laughs> At this point, you are a hindrance. Choose a character! Killed by eyelids. Does anyone need a shitty band name? Name your band eyelids, but spell it I L Y D S Z or Z. Or you could name your band Fingertips. I got plenty of ideas. Who was that dude that was, like, paying for fans and, like, did a gig to zero people with his band? And it was like, he had, like, music videos. No, not me. The other guy. Not me. That too, but who else? Threaten. Yeah, there, that's him. T-H-R-E-A-T-I-N. Thank you. Yeah, I think he hired band members, and he had, like, a lot of views on some of his videos, and they went to go do a gig, and he, he got all these guys together, and they played to, like, three people or something. And they later found out that he just, like, orchestrated the whole event and paid for it. It was something like that. Something weird. Pitchfork had some articles on that. He said he wasn't sorry or anything. Well, why would he be sorry? I mean, he didn't really do anything wrong. He still paid his guys, right? That's all that matters. That's like buying a Twitter account of like 70,000 people and they're like, great moves, keep it up. Great moves, keep it up. Great moves, keep it up. And then you go to a convention and it's just like the one dude who sold you the account. Fuck. It wasn't a gig, it was a tour of Europe and he didn't pay them. Alright, never mind. I have to modify how I feel about this whole situation. He duped the locations he was booked at. They could have booked someone else. And as a result, the venue didn't Okay, see, now there's a lot more to this than I actually first thought. So the venue that booked him, thinking he had, like, a large following and he was going to bring people in for drinks and to buy seats and stuff, they lost out on money. That's crazy. That's, um, yeah, good. So I'm going to start a band called Eyelids. And the idea is we're going to do a tour of Europe. But I'm going to hire fake band members this time. You know how Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone got like a bunch of cardboard cutouts of like Shaquille O'Neal and he put them on like train tracks? I'm going to have them in the band and... Um, I'm gonna hide them behind a curtain, so you just see their silhouettes. I 
Actually, Macaulay Culkin did have a real band, for, and I'm sure most of you know about this, but he had a band called the Pizza Underground, where he had long hair and like a beard, and he played the harmonica, and they just did songs um, about pizza in the style of Velvet Underground songs. So they it, they just changed the lyrics to Velvet Underground songs. So, like, instead of, she's a femme fatale, it would be, like, pepperoni. <laughs> I don't even know. I've never listened to it. So, a novelty cover band, yeah. But they're not from New Zealand, so they're not New Zealand's number one cover, uh, novelty cover band. This level really does suck. So, uh, some of these levels are not good. <laughs> it's not even worth getting the fucking coin. Someone just said, could you imagine paying for these? What if, like, you wanted to import the cards from Japan for these? And you end up spending hundreds of dollars to get all of the e-reader cards, because you're the biggest Super Mario Brothers fan, and then you get these levels. Again, I'm overstating, or I'm being a little dramatic, because the levels aren't that bad. There's a couple good ones so far, and the remakes of the first Mario games levels are, are pretty alright. But yeah, they're hitting they're hitting some weird levels of, of strange difficulty. Like note block difficulty. Sorry nothing. This brings back some memories of Mario 3's more, uh, fun levels with, with good secrets and stuff. I like the desert levels in Mario 3 for some reason. Oh! Oh! Jesus! Oh, God. I could have used the radish to get the fucking E. Whoa! couldn't import the cards because they were region locked. Oh. So you just had to wait then. I guess the first time people were able to play uh, all these levels in the US was the Wii U version, was it? Or emulated and hacked. <laughs> Here we go. Cards rarely worked anyway. They were janky and shitty. You'd scan them and nothing would get read. <laughs> wow, this all sounds so terrible. It's like the precursor to Amiibos. But in the worst possible way. At least the Animal Crossing cards work. I'm not talking about the e-reader ones. I'm talking about the Amiibo ones, you know that I used for, um, New Leaf. New Leaf. Oh. This is... Oh, God.
Is there a ramp up in difficulty? Or is it just a bunch of random levels in random order? They're just random? I can't believe they time-traveled, borrowed these levels from Mario Maker, and brought them back. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. I watched a video about Resident Evil 6 last night, and why it was such a bad Resident Evil game. The dude didn't even say it was a terrible game. I forget... There's too many YouTubers to keep track of. Everyone does these video essays. It's hard to keep up. But, um, he had some good things to say about Resident Evil 6, and as I watched the video, I realized... Wow, I don't remember any of this game and I fucking streamed all of it when it first came out. It was such an unmemorable game. I just remember sliding around on Leon's knees with a knife, and I remember enjoying Leon's campaign a little bit more than the other ones. Um, I remember Chris Redfield punching a boulder, but I'm not even sure if that was six or five. There's five. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? But we'll have plenty of time to talk about Resident Evil, because the Resident Evil 2 remake is coming out soon. And, um, I've been watching, you know, the Resident Evil videos that have been recommended to me on YouTube recently. And, um... I do plan on, at some point, streaming the, the remake. Maybe around, um, Halloween this year? I've never completed the remake. No, no, not the remake of 2, I'm talking about RE make. Resident Evil first remake. With Chris and Jill. I'm gonna stream Resident Evil 2 Remake as soon as that comes out, but I mean, um, the first one... It's a game that I bought on the GameCube and never finished, and I've never fully played through Resident Evil 1 in any capacity. I've only played through some of the remake, and so I need to correct that. I know it's gonna have tank controls, I know it's gonna be rough, but I think it would make for a good Halloween game. And, um, watching these videos about Resident Evil has brought me back to a lot of nostalgia for the series, and I gotta bite the bullet and do it. I will get the Steam version, so I'm not going to do the GameCube version. I think the, the backgrounds are, are higher res, too, so that's... that's cool. Would you play Resident Evil 5 again? No. No, I'm good. 5 was fun. It was, it was a fun co-op game, but it was very unlike Resident Evil, and it was just dopey shoot game. But, uh, I wouldn't- I wouldn't revisit it, just like I would never revisit 6. There's also a really good video I watched about Resident Evil 7 and why it's such a good game. And Resident Evil 7 really is fucking amazing. I'll be talking more about the series during my RE2 remake stream, but... This video was good. It actually- it articulated a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to. It's like, oh, that's... That's one of the things that I noticed that was different about this. Like, it's not just a game where you run from the monsters all the time for 12 hours. You get empowered, slowly, and then... You know, more and more your character gains confidence as you gain confidence, and more abilities and weapons. And, um... It goes from that, that beginning part where you feel really helpless, 
into, you know, you can handle yourself, and then you have to just make it through all these sick, sick, fucked up things. It's kind of cool. Two boom booms, huh? So that's what we're doing with difficulty these days? John Tendo's like, I know. We'll give him a boom boom. Wait a minute. Just one? No. Two. Pam and her Pam Pams. It worked! Yeah, no, it worked. Turns out two boom booms is difficult. What is this stanky instrument that is playing the, the lead of this song? It's like a shitty GBA recorder. So I had a weird dream. This is- tonight is a night of, of strange commentary. I don't know what to tell you. Y you've come here for some entertainment, and I'm just giving you, like, weird stuff. But I- I have a- I had a dream... ...that it- I was in a game-slash-movie? It would- it was like a TV show. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, it doesn't make any sense, but it was like a medieval... ...kind of thing, and- and I played through... Yes, played through all of the first season. And it was like a territory thing where, like, I, I started in a tree, and there were like weird, like, what are the goat people called in like fantasy and in, in, like myth? They're like, um, like Pan. What's that? What's that dude? A satire. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, it was like those things plus um, like other things. And we lived in a hole, and it was like, there were many clans. And through much strife, we- we overcame... We overcame the first thing, and then we had to move on to the next one. Listen, I know, I-, I this doesn't make any sense. But, I remember the name of this game slash TV show slash movie, and I wrote it down. And here's the name of it. This is the name of the dream I had, whether it was a show or game or movie, I don't know what it was. It's very, very uh, hazy, but... I have to look through my phone real quick. It was called... <laughs> Vulcan's Hold. V-A-L-K-E-N apostrophe S. Hold. Vulcan, I believe, was the satire king. And it, it's about how he goes on to... Him and his hold... Go on to take over... All the clans. And they're, they're, they're good goat people. It's Sat... Satyr? Satyr? The king of satire? <laughs> He's Jerry Seinfeld in goat form. I wasn't fucking with you. Does this exist? What if I go- hang on, what if I Google? What if I Google this? Vulcan... Vulcan's hold. Going to- it's a paintball gun. And there's no results for it on the internet, period. Um, but there's full finger Vulcan plastic back gloves.
So that's what a Vulcan is. It's just, um... Paintball shit. Vulcan paintball. So, we can't use the name. It wasn't particularly original. Not enough to warrant me, like, actually wanting to do something about it. Again, it was a very, like... Territorial, like, kind of in, in, like, Civ. Like, there are different territories. Like, territory control type thing. And yet, at the same time, it was structured like a movie. It looked like a movie, but it was also a TV show, and by the time I finished and woke up, season one was over. So I don't know what the fuck- what, what are dreams, anyway? I'll tell you what, dreams, they complicate my life. an REM lyric. I was I was hoping someone would um <laughs> would have gotten that. What was the entire thing I just told you? Everything I told you for the past three minutes was an REM lyric. No, just the dreams they complicate my life. Vinny, are you going to play Faith 2 next month? It comes out next month? Uh, no, I'll save that one for Halloween. There's a couple things I want to save for Halloween. Like, um, and I know this is ten months away, so... You know, maybe, um, maybe I'll be alive by then, but... I'm thinking Halloween I'd like to stream... What was it? Living in Vivo? Is that correct? Life in Vivo? Lost in vivo. <laughs> we are vivo. Viva la vivo. Living la vivo loco. So, yeah, Faith 2, that, someone else had a recommendation, I might do the remake. I, I just say remake, it's just Resident Evil Remake. R-E-make. So if you hear me say that, that's what I mean. Perhaps... a Dead Space 2 stream? Around the time? I don't know. It's a long month. It also depends on what else comes out that month. If there's another huge release, like say, Nintendo announces Animal Crossing... ...and it comes out October 1st, that's going to cut into some of my uh, Halloween streaming. Oh, oh, Lingina's Mansion. Oh man, I forgot about that. I hope Lingina's Mansion comes out on, uh, just before Halloween. That would be great. Again, I keep getting to fucking boom boom with the goddamn low health. A small Rio. Have you listened to Chronic Town and Murmur from REM yet? I've listened to Murmur, and I really enjoyed it. I could skip this level. Kinda hate it. I'm kinda going backwards through R.E.M.'s catalog from Automatic for the People, which I don't care how uncool it is to like that album, I love it. Um, Out of Time I love. Green. The one before Green which I can't think of the name of, is what I'm at at the moment. I'm like... 
I'm happy to not delve into them too quickly because if I do that, I'll probably forget a lot of it. I'm kind of like absorbing each album as I go because I really, really love this band and I never really got into them before, so... I feel like one album at a time backwards is a good way to do it and I'm probably going to skip most of their like 90s stuff for the time being. They have a lot of albums too. Um, but I'm also listening to XDC's catalog. And, um, I've been listening to that Jeff Tweedy album, and I'm- I'm also in dire need. Of- of- I'm gonna skip this level. I gotta listen to Tom York's Suspiria soundtrack. Oh no. It's these fucking beetles. Speed up. This is also probably a good idea to do these levels after you complete Mario 3. So that way, you're already... You know, you're already in the groove. You got all the basic mechanics down. You've hit some of the more advanced levels in Mario 3. I didn't think Mario 3 was an overall, like, difficult game. I mean, it is. It can be. But it's not the hardest Mario game. I was able to beat Lost Levels as a, a younger human, somehow. Small human, why do you bleed? Mr. Wolf, that is not appropriate! <gasps> Jesus fucking Christ! <sighs> Who made this level, Satan? Dig, dig, dig. Dig to you. What? This is a new mini game. Dig! Does it cost points to dig? Who's better, Wharf or Bortus? Wharf. Come on. I like Bordis, though. Bordis is, is a suitable comedy replacement. In uh, what I like to call TNG light. There wouldn't be, yeah, there would not be a Bordis without a Wharf. Speaking of Trek. In my Super Maker Mario level, I will put the blocks that 
make the music so you can jump all over the place. <laughs> it will be fun! Is this what the babies do? I was so excited to play these levels. And while they're not the worst things I've ever seen, my hope, my dreams, mm, the smile on my face, all gone. Hello and welcome to Field of Coopers. My name, John Cooper. In this level, you will have to bounce on the Coopers to get to the next area. How fun! But be careful! Some Cooper will kill. Between this and Kirby's dream course, I feel like I'm subjecting myself to suffering lately quite a bit. Repentance, perhaps. Penance. Well, Mother is not a... like a... batshit difficult game, it's just... it's just sad. A lot. Now's not a good time to have a small cut on my thumb. From what? I don't know. It was a mystery cut. It's not bleeding or anything. Is it gamer thumb? No. From Vulcan's Hold. That's right. That's right. I woke up from the dream with a small cut. Um. It's good. Yeah, my gamer thumb issue that I was having <laughs> when Red Dead 2 came out is almost completely gone. I, I have full mobility. Um, it, you know, it, if I... If I squeeze the thumb all the way, like if I, if I, you know, push my thumb down into the palm of my hand with a little bit of force, I can feel a little pain. So something's clearly fucked up there. But I have full mobility. Doesn't hurt. Full flexibility. And it's, uh, it's good. Compared to what it was, I actually, for a time, considered going to a doctor. But I think... Using the PlayStation 4 controller and playing as much Red Dead and Smash as I've been playing strengthened my gamer thumb. It was like physical therapy. And now it's like really, like it's strong. But there was that gamer doctor on you. Again, same place. There was that, that gamer doctor on YouTube that was like, 
Hello, gamers. Let me show you some exercises for your thumb. And I did the exercises, and those helped. Little by little. Which is a really good Radiohead song. And then, you know, it just slowly started kind of going away. So that's the least of my getting old problems. Now let me tell you about my IBS. No, knock on wood. Knock on wood, I, I'm pretty alright in that department too, thank god. I should knock on some wood. There you go. See? Full boomer. Getting like crusty thumbs, making knock on wood jokes. Talking about falling apart. This is what you're here for, right? So anyway, what's your favorite Beatles song? <laughs> Everybody! Do you drink? Not very often. I'll tell you what though, I got some sparkling lemonade from Trader Joe's. That I've been drinking. Um, Revolution number nine. How many people have said Revolution number nine? Uh, mods, can you make note of the Revolution number nine people? I don't trust anyone that considers Revolution number nine their favorite Beatles song. Sorry. You just, uh, you don't let me down. Good choice. That's a good choice. I was joking, by the way, but it's we got a bunch of legit answers, so... This is probably going to be a two-part stream. Which, that's fine. Some of these levels are fucking brutal. I can't- someone said, um... Someone said, hey Jude. I forget who did an interview about it. It's like... The idea of hey Jude is better than the song itself, where everybody gets together and sings together and it's kind of nice. But, I'm just so sick of it. I'm like Carl, sick of it. Favorite Beatles song is Billie Jean. Funny you should say that. Michael Jackson owned the Beatles catalog for a while. You should listen to this. You might find this interesting even if you don't know what's going on here. Hang on a second. There was a good version of this interview. It's too long. There's, there's, there's a... Yeah, there's too much of it. The interview was... It's, it's like, you know, a couple minutes. I don't want to faff about trying to find the one that I'm, you know, I'm talking about. But it was funny. Essentially, um, Paul and Michael Jackson worked together on some songs. And they became friends. And one day, they were talking about, like, you know, Michael Jackson being the biggest star in the world. It's like, you should think about, like, music publishing and, and owning the rights to music. And Michael Jackson was like, he was like, I'm gonna get yours. And Paul was like, oh, whatever. And then, a couple years later, or some time later, maybe it wasn't even years, maybe it was just... Some time later, Michael Jackson had purchased the entire Beatles catalog. Rats gone! But yeah, that's how he said it. He was like, there was this little voice on the end of the phone that said, I'm gonna get yours. You know what I mean? You know, I went to Michael's house. There was a llama in the fridge. It's weird, man. But it's alright. It's all about peace and love anyway. 
quite a bit of a thrash. These coins aren't even fucking worth it. I mean, the mini games are cool and everything, but I just want to get through all this. Just so. Oh. That llama drove away Freddie Mercury? Wait, what, really? There's a story behind that? What do you mean? Like, the, the llama, like, scared Freddie Mercury out of Michael Jackson's house? Okay, so maybe sometimes we do go a little bit more than 3% music discussion. But I think this is interesting stuff. Well, they did do a collaboration. Freddie Mercury and Michael Jackson collaborated on some songs. It was like a full album's worth of songs, but apparently... Apparently, Freddie Mercury said that the songs weren't any good. He was like, well, maybe, you know, one day someone will do something with them, but... I think he said, like, they weren't worth it! Oh! They were going to record songs together, but Michael kept bringing the llama into the studio, and Freddie told his manager he wanted out. What the fuck? Well, I know they recorded stuff. There is an interview with Freddy where he talks about them having recorded stuff that won't maybe see the light of day. And I don't know if any of it did. Uh, I don't really keep tabs up on either of, of those careers after a certain point. Do you think Michael Jackson is just like a world-class troll? Like he did this just for his own amusement? Like, I'm gonna bring a llama into the studio. It's ignorant. And then he's like, I'm gonna buy Freddie Mercury. Oh wait, I'm gonna buy the Beatles. I meant was, not is. But, yeah. I'm gonna buy Freddie Mercury. <laughs> what are you talking about, my dear? You don't buy me. And then somehow he ends up buying Freddie Mercury. He's like, I already got the rights. And Freddie's just like, he just reads the paperwork. He's like, you're right. All right, old chap, what do you want to do? I want to ride a roller coaster in my backyard with you, Freddie. Hip, hip. That's it. it just, they just wanted to ride a roller coaster together. That's that's all that happens. Just pet the llama once, Freddy. Do you even wash this thing, my dear? No? I'll bring it out in the rain if it never net.
I think I figured out your dream in the Kill Jesta video. Lemmy is dressed somewhat satyr-like and is named Falkenhoof, which in his accent he pronounces vaguely like Vulcanhold. Maybe you subconsciously remembered that. Speed guide on today's quest. No, that's not- I mean, that's good detective work, and I'm very familiar with that video. I love that fucking video. But, no, I don't- I don't know if that was, like, regurgitated through a dream. I mean, maybe. Vulcan hoof. Vulcan hold. There's a lot of commonality here. I don't know, man. You should be, like, one of those, um, dream detectives. <laughs> I say it like they exist. Meanwhile, there's no such thing as a dream detective. You could probably make some money, though. The dream police? Does that exist? Is this like getting into minority report territory? I mean, does that exist in fiction, is what I'm trying to say. So it's like a mix of Minority Report and Freddy Krueger. Like, we're gonna get to such a dystopian future that you're gonna have a bunch of, like, Freddy Kruegers dressed in suits. With, like, guns. Like, hey, bitch! I saw your dream. It's a nice mix of 1984. Plus, um, a horror movie. It could be a new genre. You can see some of these levels have roots in other levels that exist. In Mario 3. Like, there's that one level where you have to actually fly up to the top in the ice area, the ice cave. Kind of reminded me of that. See, this looks like a nice level. It's just a nice level. Watch it get terrible somehow. I feel like there's a Mondo cheese with this level where you just use the, the feather or the raccoon and you just fly. What's your favorite kind of cheese? Getting some Super Mario 2 vibes now. Um, I put provolone on a lot of things. I feel like it goes well on sandwiches, cheesesteaks. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's the most versatile. For me. But yo. I got this cheese thing. It was like a cheese and sausage variety pack. And, um, there's some really interesting cheeses in there. There's like smoked cheeses, there's like an, a garlic cheese, there's an onion tasting cheese. Um, there's sharp cheddar, there's a bunch of, like, there's, like, creamy cheese, but there's also the harder ones that you have to cut, and you put them on crackers. And every one so far has been amazing. Small things in life, you know what I mean? I figured I'm hibernating, I'm in winter mode. Um... And I currently don't care, so I'm just eating cheese. 
Not too much, but a little bit. I'll try, like, one new cheese each day on a couple crackers. Like I said, I'm foraging. There was a day where I just ate that stuff and, and like, one other thing. And I was like, yep, good enough. But, um, I decided to go to Trader Joe's and, and buy some stuff. Like I said, I got some... I heard that there were a number of interesting things that you could get at Trader Joe's that, that are frozen. I know, I know, I screwed up. I have to rock the block. Well, it's kind of too late now. Oh, is that how that works? That's not a mechanic that you see in Mario 3. Zero coins, but that's fine. So you could just walk all the way to the right and just finish the level, but if you want the coins... But yeah, I read that, um... I read that Trader Joe's had good frozen stuff, right? So, today, I, I just picked up some stuff. I bought some, like, vegetables and fresh shit, too. But I wanted to see if this frozen stuff was good. Just in case I'm feeling extra lazy. Mondo lazy, in fact. And the answer is... Like I said, the the chicken tikka masala is, is legit. Oh, that's how that... This is a brand new game mechanic as well. But... I was recommended the macaroni and cheese. They have a chili macaroni and cheese. I haven't tried that one, but I didn't try the other one yet either, so who knows. And I don't even, like, I've been to Trader Joe's, like, once in the past two years. So this isn't something that I'm, like, particularly, um... ...common, or familiar with, rather. Um, but, like, that kind of stuff. I got, like, um... It's like a ham and cheese croissant thing that's um that you put in the in the oven. Uh what else? Kung Pao chicken was recommended as being really good. So I got some of that. Apparently, I just said another meme. Sorry for food chat this late. Hungary. trying to think of, um, I got some vegetables to combine with that stuff. Like, for example, um, I got, like, a... Like, potatoes, um, thing. There was another thing, too. I forget what it was, but I got broccoli to combine with the mac and cheese. I figure if I'm gonna be disgusting, I may as well throw a veggie in there. If you, if you douse, if you douse a veggie in cheese, it's still healthy, right? The dumplings? No, I didn't get the dumplings. I just wanted to see the rest of this level, because it's, it's a really good one.
did you get that bread, though? I don't know about that bread, though. I'm upset that I didn't get that bread, though. That's also a meme. Alright, listen, someone needs to educate Grandpa on what not to say on the stream. In fact, you know what? Fuck you, I don't care. Um... <laughs> Alright, this will be the commentary for the rest of the night. I'll show you on this next level. Desert. Water. Jumping. Jump. There is a coin. Pipe. Go in the pipe. And now I'm going up. Breaking the blocks. Can't get hungry. Did you know that there was a theory that the accountants in the office were actually money laundering and were pretending to be nicer or normal or stupid on purpose so they could get away with money laundering? Enough so that Kevin could buy a bar later on? Oh wait, this isn't the right commentary. Angela wasn't nice or normal or stupid, though. Well, she pretends to be Christian. Well, she is. Anyway, thanks for watching or then listening to this edition of Vine Sauce's The Office Podcast. I, I, you know, I'm done with the show now, so soon enough, I'm just not going to think about it. But YouTube keeps recommending top 101 office facts that you never know. And I like learning about them, because, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of nice. It's a really, it's a show that makes you feel pretty good. I don't know. I like Steve Carell. So, so I know some office facts now. What's he up to these days? Um... I, he's in a movie where he plays a weird, uncanny, al animated version of himself. We can go back to Star Trek The Next Generation facts if you want. that Michael Dorn, a.k.a. Worf, would constantly get his lines all fucked up, and he was frequently the one to, um, break, break everybody. And he would go, God, Jesus! There you go. Now you know, Worf facts. Did you know that a Worf is also, um, a thing where boats is... Wait a minute. I can say that better. Let me let me use um better words. Did you know that a wharf is at the by water at the edge of land?
made it worse. All right, it's where Boats is. This is um this is a really cool mechanic. I like this a lot. I like this a lot, he says, as he approaches death. Did you know that- here's a fact, here's a Mario fact. Did you know that Mario's a fuck? There's no big coin over there. That was misleading. Happy days fact? Oh, uh, Richie Cunningham was played by Ron Howard, who is a director who took over for Lord and Miller f for the Star Wars Han Solo movie because they made a good movie, and Disney was like, no. That's your Happy Days fact for today. Apparently, the Lord and Miller version had a lot of improv and was very funny. And there was still, you know, there was humor. There was humor in the version that we got. But it wasn't anything... Like... I don't know, it wasn't, like, amazingly funny. It was just... Oh, hey! hey! A funnier movie than we've ever had. But the thing is, about, for me, in Star Wars, see, now we're talking about Star Wars, how'd this happen? Star Wars! <laughs> oh, no wonder. But the thing for me is, the original Star Wars movie is pretty funny at times. It's actually, it's got a nice sense of humor that doesn't feel too forced. The characters are witty and, and, um, faster and more intense and... I don't know, I kind of like that movie for its humor. It doesn't feel like it's too much, and then they got cutesy with Return of the Jedi with the Ewoks, who, who I don't find funny. I just, they're, they're supposed to be cute, but they're kind of, like, unsettling, and... I don't know. At least Jabba's Palace had some fun aliens. And I'm not talking about the ones in the special edition! Like the, the one whose tonsils you can see? I don't like that. I don't like that alien whose tonsils you can see. And the new singer that they got? Bad. Bad Lucas. Oh, I said Lucas again. Shit. What's this called? The Kuso Shoe? Ow! No! And I know, it's the Kar Karibo Shoe. Isn't there a game coming out called Kuso? Already came out? Was it any good? Or was it... 
Was it any good? It's a cute little platformer. Doesn't have anything to do with poop, right? After this level, we'll uh, switch over to Smash. That's cool. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I should just stop here. Carrie Fisher was doing so much coke during the Blues Brothers that John Belushi told her it was too much. If John Belushi tells you you have a coke problem, you're in trouble. Poor Carrie Fisher, man. Such a... fucking... Sad. She had such a good career ahead of her, too. Someone in chat just said, what a badass. I mean, there's that aspect of it. Um, you know, un until until you can no longer be a badass, and your body just starts rejecting any and all things that you blow up your nose, but sure. It's a lot of fucking coke. It's a lot of fucking coke. Adam Sandler was on, um... Conan's podcast, and he was like, oh, yeah, hey, hey, how you doing, Conan? You know, it's, you know, we're gonna do it. Hey, you know, how you doing? Hey, buddy, you know. And he was talking about Chris Farley. And, um, I don't really like Adam Sandler all that much. Oh, oh, fuck! They may be calling her a badass in general instead of in relation to cocaine. Well, she was a badass. But yeah, Adam Sandler... He seems like a nice guy. I mean, all of his movies are scams to pay his friends, so there's that. Who does like Adam Sandler? Lots and lots and lots of people, enough to keep him... in Not only in the business, but a very lucrative part of the business. This dude can make movies that sell out. Well, I mean, that's obvious. Dunk! Dunk! Dunkachino! But I didn't hate the interview. Um, I just, I, I can't help but like Conan. I'm just like a really big fan of the dude's podcast now, because you're, you're really getting like a nice insight. I'm uh, awaiting the inevitable Jack White interview. That should be fun. I just like when Conan actually talks to people. He's a very knowledgeable, interesting dude. And I, I like when he has more than five minutes to talk to someone, and he gets to not only have to try to be funny, but he can just be himself and share his interests. That's fun. I like that. Will you do the Jay Leno impression tonight? All right, here's uh, Jay Leno interviewing Adam Sandler. Well, how, how you doing, Adam? I just, you know, it's nice to have you on the show. I mean, it's a great movie. Jack and Jill, I saw it. It's terrific. Really, I mean, I loved it. Oh, I, I, you know, buddy, uh, you know, my show. Oh, you know, well, you know, it's just, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, it was fantastic. It was just, oh my, oh my God. I mean, it was just, you know, and cars were in it. I saw a car. It was parked. Yeah, you know, well, you know, it's just, you know, just buddy. Oh, oh. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I meant to do an impression, but I had a stroke along the way.
this is my final attempt at this level before I, uh, shit can it and come back next time. Vinny, I think Castlevania 2 is the best Castlevania game ever made. What are your thoughts on this? Do you know how some opinions can be objectively wrong? That is unrelated to your statement. Anyway, um, yeah, Castlevania 2 I don't think is a great game. And, uh, it had some cool ideas. No, I think it had some, some interesting ideas in it. It had some good music. But I don't think it all pulled together properly. And it was tedious and frustrating and, and also some really weird decisions in that game. It's a terrible night to have a curse every couple minutes. And, ugh. But it was kind of ahead of its time. Like, they, they really... They really went hard with that one. This, this level fucking... This level fucking sucks. I like the shoe levels, too, usually. Um, but yeah, there's another couple pages. So there's, like, a total of, like... You know, two pages and a little bit more. So, that's... That's enough for another stream. Um, my thoughts on this are as follows. I guess I feel like... Some of these levels were good. Some creativity. I like the... Mario 2 stuff. I feel like more radishes would have been fun. Actually. Maybe some Shy Guys would have been cool. So more Mario 2 brought into the fold would have been really nice. Um, I like the Mario World stuff, but you are lacking some of the stuff from Mario World. Like, you can't throw things up. You can't throw things directly up. You can't, um, you know, do a spin jump. So, some of that's lacking. Some of the levels are bullshit hard. Some of the levels are just plain not fun. Like that Ghost House level. But, there's some that are good that take influence from the Mario 3 levels. Like, you'll see the ones I'm enjoying. Um... I don't even mind dying a couple times in a Mario level, that's... I like that. I, I like when Mario levels are challenging, but... Considering Mario 3 did not have a checkpoint system... I feel like maybe they could have scaled it back a little tiny bit. Regardless, it's kind of nice to finally be playing these levels, and it's also kind of nice to be playing some new Mario 3 levels. So, overall, the experience was positive. Just not as much... It's not as good as I hoped it would be. Oh well.